here's what we're going to do. You're going to rumble on your thighs. I'm going to bring the volume up and we're going to bring it down. Let's try it first time. Ready? Nice. Let's try it again. All right. Now what I want you to do this third time is I want you to take it, shut your eyes if you're comfortable. Take a deep breath and invite the magic. Invite the magic. Breathe in, breathe out. Now you can open your eyes. And let's try this a third time. from different cultural backgrounds, right? And as a psychologist that plays in this band and gets to be the band leader of this band, it's been amazing to sort of witness what happens when we make music together and actually make connections to, hey, this, this is more than just about music. This can teach us about how we relate to each other, uh, our self-awareness, and of course, uh, given the diversity of the band, we talk a lot lately about social justice. We talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion. And just the observations specifically about how these four drummers put together their different intercultural rhythms, it's pretty remarkable. So I'm going to uh, have us do one more activity together. Just follow me. Do this. Do this. Right. And now do this. This. Do this. Alright. I just summarized the whole workshop for you right there. 
uh, believe it or not. What I'm telling you is, uh, I'll go over that in a minute, but just uh, uh, the agenda for today. We're, we did the introductions, we're gonna talk about key themes, we're gonna do a warm up exercise, set the intentions. We're gonna preview the parts from each of these rhythm ambassadors. And then we're going to try to put all of these cultural rhythms together and then, of course, talk about uh, connections between music, inclusive joy, and And then if we have time, we'll do uh, a Q&A. So what was I doing earlier? Theo Carlos here. Uh, he's seen here doing, he, he, you know, he and his, uh, his life partner, um, do workshops for the Kellogg School of Management, where actually his partner is a professor there. And they'll do workshops where they do drumming on leadership and this kind of thing. And whenever he does his workshops, he reminds us, all you need to do in order to you know, uh, play music is listen, so that was this, and count to four, right? So that's the first part of the workshop, the listening and counting to four. Useful tips as we get into this practically. When in doubt, drop out. We're lucky we have a band of 10 people and sometimes even though we're professional musicians, sometimes we might miss a beat or we might mess up or we might be so focused on what's going on with us where we stop paying attention to what's happening with the ensemble. So we have this motto, when in doubt, drop out. So we give you permission if there's some point where you feel like I'm not getting it or I'm not feeling comfortable, just pause and listen, and, see, and, and then you'll get to reacclimate re yourself to what's happening. Play, don't hit. You know, a lot of times, especially if we get excited and we get uh, animated, we might want to like start hitting the drums really hard. This is something that you play. It's not something you, you, you have to bang on. And you'll realize it's not very sustainable after five minutes when your hands are sore to keep playing like that. So. Throughout all of this, just know what you're coming in with. Like, am I excited? Am I anxious? Do I really feel like I need to express myself? Am I being too shy? Just self-reflect and pay attention to what's happening inside. Breathe. Breathing and music is so important, you know? So uh, it's important to pay attention to your breathing. In fact, we're going to do a little uh, breathing activity and uh, there's different breathing exercises. We're gonna start with a square breathing. By the way, we'll be drumming soon enough, I promise you. But right now we're gonna do the square breathing exercises. There's different types of exercises. This one is just a simple one. You're gonna count, and again, counting to four, right? You're gonna inhale for four, hold for four, exhale for four, hold for four. We're gonna do this for four breaths total. So if you're comfortable, shut your eyes. If you um, would rather just keep a soft gaze in front of you. And here we go. We're just going to inhale. Two, three, four. Hold. Two, three, four. Exhale. Two, three, four. Hold. Two. Again, we're going to do it. Inhale. Four. Hold. eyes shut or that gaze in front of you as you you can do this count if you want I just invite you to also find your own natural rhythm for breathing and like I was saying let's just self monitor I invite you to non-judgmentally look inside and see are you excited are you nervous what's going on and kind of like the way you look at the night sky and you look at the stars, you don't need to rearrange or change anything that you're seeing, you're just appreciating it. I invite you to do that internally. Just figure out what you're feeling right now. Check in with yourself. 
And the last thing I invite you to do, given that we're drumming and we're talking about diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging, is there any goal that you have for yourself this morning? Just want you to reflect on that. And if you have an intention, bring that with you. And give yourself permission to realize that intention through this workshop and beyond. You're taking as much time as you need when you're ready to open your eyes. Even doing this twice a day, and I recommend this as, as students, life can get stressful. Just doing this twice a day doesn't take very long at all. But research has shown that it can get you rapidly into a relaxed state. So uh, we do it a lot before a show or when we have other stressful things going on in our lives. So. And also wanted to sort of decolonize this idea of mindfulness a little bit. You know, there's many different cultures that are very, very old that um, where this stuff comes from. So just here's a fun fact. It's a big buzzword nowadays, mindfulness, but it actually comes from very old and deep systems from various cultures, African, Asian cultures. And one example is a yogic practice from India called pranayam, which is a whole set of breathing techniques. And I know we're just scratching the surface on, on some of these techniques, but um, just wanted to give a nod to some of the cultural roots of some of these practices. All right, so key themes for today. Engage and notice, we talked about that. Connect what we're experiencing to uh, identity, inclusion, and belonging. And then think after today, how are you gonna apply this experience, right? What are you discovering about yourself through this process? How is this gonna affect your life? And you know various areas like work, or in your case, schoolwork, relationships, and other aspects of your life. All right, sound like a plan? Okay. So Baba Kwame was not with us this morning, but he reminds us: Do we view something uh, unfamiliar as diverse or adverse? So we just it, it ask you to have a stance of openness, embrace difference, monitor our initial reactions to it, and approach with curiosity inclusion and a predisposition to validate. So if you're learning something new, try to validate it. All right, I've done enough preamble. Let's get to uh, the Rhythm Ambassadors. And uh, who wants to start? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hear a little bit from each Rhythm Ambassador. It's gonna teach you a rhythm. And uh, you're gonna learn all four rhythms, like a West African rhythm, a uh, North Indian rhythm, Brazilian rhythm, and um, uh, Latin rhythm, and then we're going to try to put it all together. So we're going to have bridge.
your turn. <laughs> to each other, and we were doing it through the drum and through rhythm. We were changing the sound of the drum. We were doing different things with our hands, but we were communicating to each other. And it required us, it required you to watch what I did and imitate what I did. And it also required you to come up with something different that you played that the other group had to listen to and imitate. So that's part of what we're here to do to kind of kick off this whole idea about diversity. This is what I call empathetic listening. And it's a first step for you to understand what another person is going through or what another person carries with them. So you have to listen to what that other person has to say and take it in and process it before you have an understanding of yourself. So that's kind of part of a little bit of the activity today, forcing you to think about being an empathetic listener, accepting what the person is presenting to you and imitating it and listening to it. So that's kind of a little exercise we're doing, but actually the rhythm that I'm going to teach you is very, very simple, which is exactly what we were doing, and it's like this. Let's try it. Oh, you want to try it with the hands? Let's try the hands here. 
the dictates of how we're going to the act. But many things that, we're, that, that we play in the Caribbean is actually from West Africa, including my favorite. By the way, my, my favorite instrument is called the conga, 
But that's what I take. But I love this thing. It's called set up to me. Check it in. Check it in. Check it in to me is that it's like most shakers is a, is a really a happy sound. I call it also the seasoning to a meal. To me, this is the meat. You know, you got the head to go, right? You got the tofu. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so to me, playing bells and shakers is like I said, the seasoning to the meal. It's like a very lively thing. Because you know, sometimes you go to a drum event and oh, you hear boom, boom, boom. You know, it's cool, but you know, I like that seasoning on top. So, um, what I have underneath you, the should be shaker, but uh, I think that uh, it has. So basically, but what is it? What does it mean to be a drummer or a percussionist or a hand percussionist? Let me say, you're looking for the fault. If you don't know what the hell to play, but feel it. Like, when you need to boom, 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 right? Because that's, that's what you feel, right? That's what you feel that. But we call, we call the setup me the downbeat. session we need to do, there's weddings, there's different events that happen in, in the villages and different parts of the, the, uh, the country that you use this drum to bring people together. It's a joyous drum, so if I play it, all of a sudden you're going to feel like this. It's not a very soft sound because it has two parts. It's got a bass and it's got a high end. But when I play them together, I can make different rhythms. So that's the purpose of the 
drum that brings people together to dance and celebrate. The dance form is called Bhangra. So I want you to say it, I'm going to lift this up. Say Bhangra. Bhangra. Bhangra is where you put your arms up and you kind of shake and shake. Right? Right? That's what it is. And that's what people do it, but they do it to the shiver. shaker sound. So we'll start here. I want you to pick your drum, do whatever you want, and say your name out loud. Any drum you want. Alright, this one. Perfect. So play it and then say your name. Play it? Yeah, just hit it. Make some sound. Perfect. And your name? Debbie. Debbie. I'm saying that the names of the drum are just like the names of your individual personality. They have personalities themselves. So the reason I ask you to kind of make a sound is you can tell which side you're going to play. Is it going to be a bass? Is it going to be high end? And I need three parts. So if you're feeling like your instrument plays bass, simulate the drum or do something. Five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, 
changing the speed, I want you to play double time. And that's why it's a little bit tricky because I want you guys to sound like this.
let's go to the middle. The middle part keeps us going. Carlos already started playing a little bit because I could hear it. So now for the middle part, I want you to just count the one, two, three, four and play on every note. Does that make sense? One, two, three, four. One, two, three. So you can do a couple of things. You can hit it at the side, right? At the side or at the top. Whatever yeah, you sounds you like. One, two, three, four, one. Yeah. Okay, there's different tones you can make out of it. But as long as you're hitting each note. Does that sound good? Yeah. You want to try it out? One, two, three, four. Perfect. You understand the rhythm? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Good. And it's different from her, so don't be confused. <laughs> she's going to try to throw you off. So she's got butt up. One, pop up, boom, pop up. You gotta be strong on the one, two, three, four, one. And it might be even better if we ask Carlos to come doing up here. Because he's gonna have that, what did he say? He fills in the sound, right? What did you call it? How did you describe it when you fill in that sound? It's the dressing on top or? <laughs> it's the seasoning, right? So this is the seasoning, but it's an important part. So you can cover that and, and follow him. So. We got three different leads. We got Raul's going to cover the high. Uh, we got uh, Rich is going to cover the low. Uh, PC and are you covering the highs? Yeah, high. PC and Raul are going to cover the highs, and Carlos is going to cover the mids. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. And, and you as well. One, two, three. You have a couple of different things you can do. You can go one, two, three, four, or you can go one, two, three, four. However you feel comfortable. You want to try it? That sounds awesome. You feel good? Okay. Who else is left? Did I get everybody? Yes. Yeah. Everyone's got a part? Who's my low part? Raise your hand. Low part. Who's my low part too? Okay. <laughs> and put your hands down. Who's my, my mid part? Yes. I got four. And who are my high parts? We all have to look and listen and then we can make the sound of one drum with everybody playing together in these three parts. You ready? We're, I'm gonna count it in, and we'll start. Wherever you feel comfortable, join in, but the parts will uh, sound like one All right, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, You know, swagger is the way you talk. In this case, rhythmically, we're talking about a swing. So if you hear Menither play, ga, 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 boom, boom. Yeah, let's hear, let's hear this his swing right here. 
It's got an attitude, and if you come from this culture, you have to get up and start dancing because it's in your blood. the swagger or the swing of the lamba. So awesome. And, and so if you have an Indian swagger and an African swagger coming in together, it sounds like the beginning of a bad joke. But uh, <laughs> when we first got together, it was like, are we going to decide to try to put these rhythms together? And that was this. Then we overlaid, at least got the tempo right, and it, it came like this. What I watched, then the magic of these four, is how did they go over the decades from this to this? Think about it. If he's playing an Indian rhythm and he's doing it correctly, it kind of fits, but it's right here. If he's doing an African rhythm and he's doing it correctly, it kind of fits. What did it take for them to go like this? I'll just say a couple of things and then we'll, we'll put it all together for ourselves. It takes trust. It takes respect. It takes the ability to listen, not just surface level, but deeply. But it might be a decision. Maninder might decide, you know, this is mainly an Af African rhythm and I need to play a support through my drum. So I'm going to bend. Because I know that next rhythm, he's going to listen, and he's going to respect, and he's going to trust, and he's going to say, you know what, that's mainly an Indian rhythm. So let me do what I can to support that. So I just want to say that, and I think it's very deep, and it says a lot about who these people are, not just as, as musicians, but as human beings. And I want to share that with you. So that was my preamble about that. Let's try to put it all together. What do we say? So... I want you to just listen, do your counting before, feel free to drop out when in doubt. But um, I think there's few enough people here, instead of counting off, I'm gonna say raise your hand if you wanna, we just need two people per group. Uh, and I'm gonna choose amongst you. Who would want to do the Indian rhythm part? Raise your hand. You two, I saw you two first. All right, you're Menendez people. Who wants to do the Brazilian, uh, parts that Rich was 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 showing. All right, I saw you two. Can you come next to him over here? You can leave your drum for right now. Who wants to do the West African parts? And, and here. Yeah, and you can, if you can go over there to the empty chairs. Who wants to do West African parts? All right, let's do you two right here. I, and Carlos, the seasoning. You have that right? Yes, the seasoning. And come join the seasoning over here. And which part did you want to do? Uh, I'm just left over. You're not, you're not left over. I okay, uh, you can choose. You're, you're the ninth person, so you can choose. I'll try one. Okay, with those guys? Yeah. Okay, so why don't you come over here, join, join them over here, and bring the drum with you. So, Baba PC is right here. Your Manila right here. Rich right here, and Carlos on the left. Okay. All right. So, I want you to follow your rhythm ambassador. I want you to just watch them and wait for the cue to come in.
So if the time gets into DEI, I won't go through all of these, but just, um, I have a slide for each one. But just like for us to be more compassionate with each other, for us to be able to demonstrate humility, to be accountable to each other, and at the, at the end of the day, insistence, insisting that we all belong, really sort of making sure that we're in each other's corner. That's enough for now. Other questions you have for any of us, or comments. What drove all of you like individually into music? Like what made you kind of draw to it and dedicate uh, your time and energy into it? What what drew us into music? What did it mean was going to a, I went to a festival like the nineteen sixty nine called Woodstock. Never oh, heard of it, but I was there all four days. I saw a band he was at the that had the drum, the combi drum. And I, I was into Latin music and all that, that was my Paris music. I was into the Stones, by Zeppelin, the, you know, these bands that I used to see. And you know, one day I picked up the drum and go up, it said, oh, this is something familiar to me. Then I bought my first combi drum, so it was like, my life didn't really change, you know, the same sense. Unfortunately, I didn't go back to some rough end of the to a music school, but I went in the streets of New York, the places like that. Then he has an adult going to Puerto Rico, Cuba, Brazil, Africa. So it, it, it's there, you know, so it's it, 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 less special than this one. Thank you. Anybody else want to answer that one? Yeah, well, for me, I, uh, it said in, in African culture, a lot of you are born into what it is. You really want to be born to be. And I, I'm born here in America, but I come from this culture. And I, since I was a kid, I've always been beating on things. So, <laughs> 
my mom and dad, they was just like, okay, get this kid a drum. And when they got a drum, they was like, oh my God, no, take the drum away from me. Yeah. But yeah, so since I was a kid, I guess I was just born to do this. I dedicated my life once I got older and tried yeah, I go to school and do all these other things that I was supposed to do, but I, I was always coming back here, you know. I go, I go outside and play ball and do everything, but I always come back to the drum. When my friends would do some crazy stuff, I was at the drum, you know. So it's, it's here, it's been here. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, right, right in the middle, you talk about nonverbal communication, this is Rich's uh, answer there. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I think that's true. I have a similar story to uh, my brother to be seen, but I'm a first generation. I'm, I was born in India, but I moved here when I was three. So I was raised here, and my family was trying to, you know, assimilate. We tried to, education was a big thing for us. So they pushed us away from careers in, in music and arts. They really tried to hammer, you gotta get a good job, you gotta go through education, all that stuff is important. But we couldn't pull ourselves away from the music. My dad was a singer, my mom used to play percussion. So even at home, even though education and, and you know formal schooling and all that was a big thing, music was just part of the atmosphere of growing up. So it was like a part of the whole uh, ecosystem in the family. We would go to uh, a church, or what we call Gurdwara on Sundays, and you'd see these musicians singing hymns, and it had instruments accompanying it. So at a very early age, it was just something that we knew that we wanted to um, invest in. It wasn't until later that I realized like how much I wanted to express myself through this, and at the same time be able to leverage some of the learnings that I had being a musician in corporate life. <laughs> because that's where it's missing. That, that, that almost like you forget about the fact that we're human first, right? We have human connection first, and music really helps bridge that. And taking that to different areas, especially what we're doing here today, it's a really important thing to remind ourselves. It's in all of us. So yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah, and just briefly to answer myself, my ethnic heritage is Punjabi. My family's from North India originally. But my two sisters and my parents were born in Nairobi, Kenya. I was born in Kalamazoo, Michigan, in the Midwest of the United <laughs> States. So bro growing up as a brown kid in the Midwest, when if we did talk about race relations, it was often just a black or white issue. And here I was trying to find my place. I was neither. So for me, music was an outlet for me. It was my therapy. It was a way for me to sort of validate who I was. And I have to say, it, it was a way for me to honor and respect largely African-American traditions because before I played the sitar, I was playing guitar and bass guitar and blues tradition, funk tradition of music coming right out of African-American culture. Just, it spoke to me and it gave me an outlet. And then when I discovered, hey, you can bring together funky, you can be funky and put these, this music together with culture, uh, you know, music from your culture of origin, I started to study the sitar. Um, Meninder and I took a road trip to California in 1996, right a few months before Funk and Daisy really materialized here in uh, Chicago. We took a road trip to California uh, from Michigan and studied uh, with some great uh, Indian classical musicians. So for me, it's it was it was therapy and it was also a way to sort of like do what I was doing and then meet other people that were that were feeling similar about this. So. And I think we do need uh, maybe to pack up. So any last, last, last call questions or comments? Yes. Hello, everybody. Hello. <laughs> hey, Justin Thomas, we're just getting started. Yes. Yeah, uh, we still have questions, but like, I really appreciate what you guys are coming and yeah. I know we bring some stuff, but like, I'm really thankful you guys for willing to come here and then like bring all these questions for us today. Thank you so much.